Actually, you know what? It's not summer anymore, so I could stop wearing these hats and I could start wearing my beanies now. No, I'm, I'm going back to hats. I'm going back to hats. The hat's staying on. Welcome to This Week in Wise Shorts, where we talk about cards. We actually have about 25 cards to look at, so I'm not going to dilly-daddle for too long, but super quick, thank you to everybody who joined in the deck building live stream. It was kind of tough to make a Kiznaiver deck, but I think we did a pretty good job on it. It doesn't look that bad, and it's more of a stock turbo bond-centered build. Also, the Wise Hangout afterward was pretty fun. It was actually kind of damn fun. And I kind of felt like those e-girls on Twitch, the, the just chatting ones. Anyways, Wednesday, I'm going to have a new Wise Showcase. And at 7.30, we're going to be building a Star Wars deck. Vote in the comments what kind of build that you want to see. Specifically, what movie we're going to be going for. And actually, you know what? Let's do a Weiss hangout like every Saturday night. Hey, all Lunchbox here. Um, Actually, uh, we will be doing the hangout streams on Friday, not on Saturday. Because uh, Saturday is the day that I'm going to be uploading a video and I kind of just want to take a break afterwards and with that let's go on to the one piece of news kaguya sama everyone is excited for this set and we do have some new set information first off we have a release date of december 18th which is the last day of school semester for me actually there's going to be a total of 110 cards four booster box prs and five signed cards the trial decks are going to come out on the same day and will feature one signed card i'm going to put my detective skills to good use now if i just Hack into the Bushy Road systems, download a couple files, decrypt them, and enhance the picture. We see. <gasps> Kaguya Sama is gonna be blue. I actually like it a lot better with that light off. So we're gonna keep that light off now. Now we are off to the cards. We are going to start off with the set that I have not covered at all, but there is one card that I do want to talk about. Oni as a comrade Shiki. She has a level assist, 500 forward. Her act effect is that you rest this card and you give a character 500 power and auto. At the start of your climax phase, choose two or more of your summer pockets Shiki and they gain plus one soul. And that card states that on play, top check your deck equal to the amount of characters. Choose a card, ditch the rest, and climax combo. On attack, if you have glad that I met you at the very end, end in play and this card has three or less soul during this card's attack when this card deals damage to your opponent burn one depending on the amount of this card's soul instead this damage is not dealt by the effect of an auto effect and this damage can be canceled the climax is a 1k1 and a choice when triggered and with that thank you all for watching don't forget to like and subscribe for more Y shores news and content and i'll see you all huh what there's more cards? How? This is like the best one. Okay, so the Shiki, whose regular art is far superior to the super rare art. Like, I'm good. Give me the Moe! Uh, it's pretty good in its own right. Uh, the power boost is pretty decent, and it is kind of nice that you can't rest a card to give it an extra 500, because when you're at level 1, uh, you're just giving 500 forward? Okay, so the actual resting act ability is pretty nice. What does suck is that you need to have a minimum of two shikis on the field. I mean, that is going to be your end goal. You want to have more than two. But it can trip you up if you only have one on the field. Oh, huh? what's that? It's the choice trigger. Oh, you're going to be fine. Off to this shiki. Oh, man. It is... This is an incredible card. Its first effect, amazing. And with that, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more... <laughs> Okay, so the real effect. Holy shit, this is super good. It is very stock heavy because you do need to throw like a couple of these on the field. Again, you want to try field. But this Shiki over here is going to set you back a bit in stock. And it is on attack, so you are not going to be breaking even. Ooh, that bit was fun. <laughs> it is on attack, so you're not going to be breaking even. You're going to need at least one stock before you attack. What's that? Sorry, my producer is bothering me today. Oh, it's on a choice trigger. You're fine. So what makes this card great is that the burn is not considered damage from an auto effect. That means you bypass any anti-burn effects. So you hear that, Kaban? Fuck you. I'm kidding. I, I love Kimono Friends. This card is a base one soul. The climax makes it two soul, plus the one one Shiki will make it three souls. So the conditions of the card state that you need to have three or less soul. That is the condition to activate the effect. So when you're at three soul, you pay one, you're good. You could add more soul to this card. So if your opponent plays one of those cards that gives your opponent's characters plus six soul, <laughs> you fucking fool. Next up, we have Love Yuki-chan Yume that states that when one of your other characters attack, this card gains 2k power. 
So, if this card attacks last, this can go up to 8k power. Again, like I mentioned in last week's episode, and like how I do say a lot, you want your level 1s to start pushing past the 6k5 threshold. Also, who's doing the attacking? Is it Yume? Is it Yuki-chan? Or is it the spoon? Or does Yume attack the character with Yuki-chan? I have so many questions. Off to Bofuri. Two persons times Sally states that when you play a Climax, this gains 3k power for the turn and Climax combo. On attack, if you have area with a never ending sunset and you have another character, mill two. Salvage a character whose total level is equal to the cards milled. The Climax is a 1k1 and an arch when triggered. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so this this is what I mean about breaking past that threshold. It does go 8k power with everything in total. You get the mills, which is great in this game, and you get a salvage. It is a gamble effect, but it is free. Dude, this is super good. Sticking to the blues, we have Genius Boy Kanata, who is a 4 character early drop. On play heal, and the turn that this is played from hand, and you have another character, this gains 2k power. It is not a wall, which kind of sucks, but it is super easy to bring out. The heal is actually super nice, and goddamn, he does swing for two soul. Good for the turn that it is played, helps get rid of early drops, and can help push for damage as well, but it's kind of bad afterwards. But this is on a double rare. Wait, what, really? Is it? I mean, I guess it's okay. Here is a red maple card. When played from hand, she gains 1k5 power for the turn and climax combo. At the start of your attack phase, if this is in your front row and you have battle between guild masters, you can ditch a copy of herself, pop the climax, choose one other character, and stand it. Then you could salvage. The climax is a standby and is standby when triggered. Fucking hell, of course it's gonna be a standby. Maple seems like the kind of card that would have a standby. So a lot of the maple cards do gain effects when they're played from the hand. Also, a big negative against standby combos is that you are not able to attack with the cards you bring back. This card remedies that action and gives you a plus of some sort on top of that. You are breaking even because of the ditch, but it is better than nothing. You are getting a body on the field through the standby effects, most likely a really big body, and you are able to restand it. You get rid of a potential dead card in your hand for another card. It's not bad, I personally like the Sally combo a little better, but for the Maple Waifu decks, this is damn good. Actually, not even just for maple waifu decks, kind of turboing out your other 3-2 maples, this is pretty good for that. I'm going to run through these cards super quickly. Saintess Misery gains 3k power if all of your characters are game characters, and when this card directly attacks, stock charge a game character. It's a standby target, and she thick in more ways than one. Flare Excel Me is on play, minus 1k to one of your opponent's characters, and she is a drop salvage. Flame Emperor Me is on play heal and climax combo. On play from the effect of Guild Master of Kingdom of Flame, you can ditch three cards, restand this card. So with that effect, you can either play the standby climax or trigger the standby climax. And that way you could ditch three to restand. So it's either or. Lastly, we have Happy Miscalculation. All of your characters gain the following effect until the end of the turn. Cancel burn one. Maybe run one because of the arts but it can come in handy as a just in case. The last set we're gonna look at is Mob Psycho and actually the last three streams that I have done, uh, everybody's been asking me what my thoughts were about the Mob Psycho cards. So uh, here you go, the answer might surprise you. Okay, probably won't surprise you. Teruki, Challenge Beliefs, has experience 2 or higher, and he gains 2k power and climax combo. On attack, if you have huge accident in play and you have another character, you could ditch a card. Top check 3, add a card, ditch the rest. And this card gains the following ability until the end of the turn. When he is front attack, bounce him back to hand. Yes, 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 and yes, this card is so good. Now, the thing with this card is that this set is very dependent on your level, so you're probably going to have a very stacked level 2 and level 3 lineup. There is a chance you're going to miss because he is a level 1, and you only have one chance to get this in, and 7 cards to just pick out of. But if you do, he is only 6k5 power. You want your level 1s to start pushing past the 6k5 threshold. Well, it is good that he gets the effect on attack and not on reverse. You do have to ditch a card, but uh, top check and add a card, not a character, it's card. You can grab climaxes, characters, and events. This is, this is damn good. Damn, it's nothing but good cards this episode, wow. Plus, he is running a choice climax, which can help you triple cards into your hand and help with stock. Speaking of events and stocks, Wig is a 3-2 event that states you cannot play this card without a Teruki character. Give two characters 2k power and the following effect. Hexproof and once per turn, cancel burn one. 
The 2k power is damn good. Hexproof during your turn can be a bit situational, but there are cards that can activate effects during your turn, so this is more like a just in case, and the cancel burn is a pretty nice touch. I would say run this card at 1 because of the art. The last card we're going to look at today is Teruki, a close shave. Experience, level 3 or higher. This gains 1k power and on attack, if it battles a level 3 character, this gains 6k power. It's a super good early drop killer, can go up to 14k power and actually, uh, this is just a good level 3 killer in general. A lot of level 3s only go up to 12k power or 13k power during the opposite player's turn. This is, this is damn good and might be a staple at 2. Like I mentioned, your level 2 and level 3 lineup might be very stacked because of all of the experience. Oh man, my mouth is very dry. And with that, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and... Oh man, I need some water. One sec. Ooh, it's a lot of talking. Doing these episodes. Anyways, don't forget to like and subscribe for more Y Shores news and content. I will see you all in the live streams. Again, Wednesday we're doing a Star Wars deck building live stream. Vote in the comments below to see what movie we're going to be building. And we're going to be doing a hangout stream on Friday. Take care and I will see everyone soon.